What's going on guys, Juan back here today after a short hiatus here on the channel. As always, very excited to be back talking to you guys about more sports creative content. As you guys just saw, I'm still working on developing my bedroom into a office as well as a YouTube space. Uh, this is the first YouTube video I'm shooting in my new YouTube studio, AKA just a corner of my bedroom. But I just got this extended calendar in the mail, which is a piece I've always wanted. Unfortunately, they're a lot harder to come across. They're usually out of sale right when they go in stock, but I managed to get lucky this time. Just a piece I've always wanted and moving a few other things around just to make this space a multi-purpose room other than just one to sleep and work in. A lot has been going on in my life in the last few weeks, which is why I haven't been able to get you guys a YouTube video recently. I did get to shoot my first NHL game just a few weeks ago, and not only was it an NHL game, it was the Heritage Classic, which is an outdoor game that was hosted in Hamilton this year. So it was not only just a game, but it was a marquee event in the calendar, and I had an unbelievable experience that I cannot wait to share and talk more about. And I also got to shoot my first championship experience in sports ever with the Ryerson Rams women's basketball team team just winning OUA gold last weekend. If you guys don't know what the OUA is, it's the Ontario University Athletics here in Canada, in Ontario. They won the provincial. They're going on to the national championship now. but I did get to shoot them winning gold in an unbelievable game. Just one of the craziest miracle comebacks I've ever seen from a team, the resilience, the storylines, so many emotions, so many great moments I got to capture. So both that and the NHL game are two things I will talk about in future videos because I think I learned so much that I wanna share with you guys. But today's video is not about either of those things. It's actually a heavily, heavily, heavily requested topic that you guys have been bugging me for maybe the last two or three months. And that is my camera settings specifically for shooting sports on my Sony a7S III. You guys have been asking me forever about autofocus settings, picture profiles, uh, the codecs I shoot in, what frame rates, everything that you guys have asked me, I've taken into consideration in this video. I'm not gonna be going over every single setting in my camera. I will be going over the ones that I think are the most relevant for anyone who is a sports videographer or filmmaker and what you should consider when setting up your camera. Keep in mind, this is on my Sony a7S III. If you shoot Canon, if you shoot Blackmagic, if you're shooting on an Icon or Lumix, I can't help you there. This is just because my experiences with Sony, I think a lot of these things do translate universally between camera brands, but things like picture profiles might be a little different here and there depending on your camera brand. So without further ado, let's get right into the camera settings and I will tell you guys exactly how I set up my camera for sports videography. So here we are on my Sony a7S III menu, but the first thing I actually wanna talk about isn't in the menu itself, but it's the one, two, and three in the mode dial on the top of the camera. The one, two, and three on the mode dial are actually super important because they represent custom modes that you can set and create for any situation to be called up at any time you need it. So the way I use this is my first mode is my 24 frames per second mode. This is for any kind of footage that I know I won't wanna slow down, that I wanna replay back in real time, maybe someone talking, maybe someone giving a speech, and whenever I'm vlogging out and about with my friends or just kind of talking to the camera myself, I'm always on mode number one, which is 24 frames per second. The second custom mode I have is my 60 frames per second setting. So this is for whenever I wanna shoot something and maybe I'm not 100% sure if I wanna slow it down or I'm shooting something that I 100% want in slow motion, but I don't need it in 120 frames slowed down to 20%. It doesn't need to be that dramatic. It doesn't need to be that slow. So this could go for any situation when you're getting someone walking or doing an activity that doesn't necessarily need super slow motion. 60 frames is great for. I'll usually use this, like I said, if I'm not sure, because 60 frames per second in full speed still looks somewhat similar so you can get away with it. So if you're never sure, if you're in between whether you want this in real time or slow motion, 60 frames per second is a great way to go. And that is my second mode on my dial. And finally, my third custom mode is probably the one I use the most. And you can have this in really any order you want. Maybe I should have this at one with how frequently I use this, but this is my mode for 120 frames per second. This is pretty much what I use every single time I'm shooting any kind of action sports because I know there's gonna be high speed, high intensity, and at some point in my edit or down the road, I'm gonna want footage that I can slow down. So 
Everything in setting number three is set towards a high frame rate to where I can slow things down 20% of its original speed. And I'm just gonna say this right now, this is purely a personal preference. You can have anything you want on these dials. These are just the three settings and three scenarios I find myself the most, so it's really easy for me to call them up and switch at a moment's notice. You can put photo presets here, you can put 30 frames per second if you want it, anything else you want, this is totally up to you, but these are just the most frequent frame rates and the most frequent settings I use when I'm shooting sports. There's one more thing I wanna talk about here before we actually get into the camera settings, and that is your exposure. And that has to do with your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. These three things are incredibly important in filmmaking. If you don't know about them, I'm not gonna go through them too in-depthly here, but there's several tutorials, there's plenty of videos explaining them, but essentially these all work in tandem for you to expose your image properly. Now, for the most part, my aperture and my ISO will remain consistent depending on the situation. I'm not always at 12800, but the reason for that I will touch on later. However, the one thing that I will touch on is my shutter speed. So with each mode dial obviously comes a different frame rate, but what that means that my shutter speed is also gonna change every single time I change my settings. Why? It's because of the 180 degree shutter rule. Whatever frame rate you're shooting in, your shutter speed has to be one over double that value. So right now I'm in 24 frames per second on my camera, which means I have to be one over 48. However, there's no 48 here, so the closest is one over 50. If I switch to my 60 frames per second, you're gonna notice it goes to one over 125. And if I go to my 120 frames per second preset, it's one over 250. The reason for this is just to give you the best and most natural motion blur possible when you're shooting video. This rule can be broken depending on the situation. I personally don't do that, but if you want a bit more of a stylized look, feel free to jack up or bring down your shutter depending on the situation and the end result you want in the video you capture. So just to summarize really quickly before we move on, make sure that your shutter speed is always one over double your frame rate for the most natural motion blur possible. I have that preset in all of my custom dial settings. So just make sure if you do decide to change frame rates and try different things, just make sure to keep that rule in mind. So with that out of the way, we're gonna move on to my actual camera settings now, starting off with the file format and the image quality. Now we have a lot of different options here, but I'm always primarily using XAVCS 4K. Why do I shoot in 4K? I've answered this question a couple times, but the biggest thing is that it gives me the most flexibility in post to punch in or pull out. Uh, 4K just gives you a lot of quality that you can retain, especially when posting on social media. There's a lot of benefits as to why I always shoot in 4K. Between all the settings here, I use the S4K because it gives you the best balance between a file that's easy to read and to work with, but also one that's not too crazy big. But keep in mind, 4K files are always still big. But if I was to go and shoot SI 4K, which is the best quality 4K that the A7S III produces, the files are gonna be enormous. Vice versa, if I was to go back and choose HS 4K, it's a smaller file, but the codec is a lot different and not a lot of computers or editing programs have the software necessary to fully use that codec to its maximum. So I always stick for the middle ground. I'm always shooting XAVCS 4K. Next up here is movie settings. And what movie settings are, are essentially you can pick your frame rate. Right now I'm at 120 frames because of my setting number three, which I'm at. But realistically, if you wanna use 24, or 30, 60, you can change it all in this part of the menu. Next is record settings, and this is where you can choose your bit depth options. Right now, I'm shooting a 422 10-bit, but not a lot of cameras right now have this setting. The a7S III luckily does, and all bit depth is is the amount of information and color depth that your video has and gives you a lot more flexibility to color grade in comparison to something like 420 8-bit. 8 8-bit 8 is great, but unfortunately, if you were to shoot S-Log or anything that requires a little bit of a heavier color grade, you're gonna have some trouble because there's just not enough information there. And I love color grading. I love kind of customizing an image to look like how I want it to. So that's why I'm always shooting 422 10-bit. It does result in also slightly bigger file sizes, but for me, it's totally worth it just to have that extra little flexibility in post. S and Q, we're not gonna touch because I never really use S and Q. Like I said, I'm only gonna be focusing on the settings I know people are asking me about. Although I do wanna talk for a second about proxies. If you have a camera that can shoot internal proxies and you don't have a laptop that might struggle with 4K footage or higher quality footage, I would definitely recommend having this on. Unfortunately for 120 frames, it doesn't allow me, but let me just switch it to 24 frames per second or 60. Having this on is so key because your camera can actually record lower res proxies within the camera, giving you a head start in editing if you are someone who needs to proxy their footage in order to edit it. 
I would always recommend having this setting on your camera. Now, audio levels are very important, but for me, it's a little different. I have my audio recording level at 11 decibels, but I have the Rode VideoMic NTG, which allows me to change the levels through the microphone itself. So I don't really ever touch this scenario here when it comes to changing my audio, but I always make sure my audio recording is on. I never really choose wind noise reduction. I'm usually shooting indoors. If I'm ever shooting outdoors, it just depends on the environment. If anything, I'll just throw a dead cat on my microphone and that does most of the work for me. Audio level display I always have on and that's just so whenever I'm shooting, you can see right here at the bottom, you can see your levels, you can change them on the fly when you need to, making sure they're not peaking or too low when you're shooting. Next up is stabilization and this is something I don't really touch because I like having it where it is. You have three options here, off, standard, and active and I will usually stay on standard because it doesn't fully turn my camera into a gimbal but it also reduces a lot of the micro jitters and shakes that you get when shooting handheld and if you guys know me, I love, love shooting handheld so most of the time i'll have it on standard if i feel like i want a bit more of a smoother look for a handheld shot i will flip it to active but just so you know it does have a bit of an extra crop on it so that's one reason why i tend not to use it but also i do like a little bit of natural camera shake here and there so i'm perfectly content just to leave it at active the next section of the settings i'm going to talk about is now to do with exposure and these are important obviously because you want your properly exposed video you don't want it to be too dark you don't want it to be too bright so this is a really important section. First things first, metering mode, I have it multi. It just meters the majority of your image and not just the center. Metering essentially just allows the camera to tell you if you're underexposed or overexposed using the little numbers here, plus two right now. Obviously this is very, very bright and overexposed but it's measuring the majority of the sensor and not just the middle of it. The next setting I'm gonna talk about here is white balance and I have it at C temp filter. Essentially, you can just change the Kelvin or the temperature of the image from really, really cold to really, really warm, depending on the scenario I'm in, depending on where I'm shooting. My color temperature, my white balance is never ever the same. It really depends on if you're shooting indoors or outdoors, what's the lighting in the gym, what's the lighting on set, et cetera, et cetera. So whenever you're in a new location, you're gonna shoot, make sure your white balance is set as accurately as possible. Believe me, it will make such, such a difference when it comes to color grading and editing and post. Moving on now to color and tone, and we're gonna go straight to picture profile because that is probably one of the things people wanna know the most about my shooting is my picture profile settings. So we're gonna go over them really quickly here. It's not very extravagant. I'm on PP8 and I use S-Log3 Gamma, and you have a lot of different options here, S-Log2, HLG, Cine4, a bunch of different options. I always shoot S-Log3 on the Sony a7S III with the color mode being S-Gamut3 Cine. There's not a lot of other changes here. I really haven't touched it. My detail is at minus five because I like to do some of my sharpening in post. But other than that, I don't really change much about my color mode. I do wanna make one note though for anybody who wants to shoot an S-Log. Keep in mind, I am shooting on a camera that can shoot 10-bit 422 video. What this means is that if you're not shooting on a camera that has this capability, if you're shooting on something that shoots just 8-bit video, I would not recommend shooting S-Log2 or S-Log3 at all because you just won't have enough information in the video, in the actual file to color grade properly. So if you find yourself shooting on a camera that does not have 10-bit 422 recording, try using something maybe between Cine2 or Cine4. I'm literally shooting this video of me showing you my settings on my Sony a6300 in Cine4. This is a color profile that I've used for so long before I got this camera here in my hands or even I've used HLG and on the a7S III, I've used HLG III. Those are also two very solid picture profiles that you definitely should check out. But for me, using a camera that has 10-bit 422, S-Log3 gives me the best dynamic range. It gives me the best color performance out of all of them. I've tried S-Log2 on this camera and it's still good, but Sony really stepped up the game with S-Log3 in this new camera with this new codec. Believe me, S-Log3 is the way to go if you have that 10-bit 422 codec. Moving on now from exposure settings and color settings, we're gonna go down to focus modes. This is another topic I get asked about a lot. The focus mode I'm on is continuous AF. I always wanna be using autofocus. Some people might say you should shoot sports in manual focus. I really, really trust the Sony autofocus settings. They've never done me wrong. So 
everyone can go their own way. I'm always gonna be using autofocus. However, if there are certain scenarios where your camera doesn't wanna focus on the subject you want, you can always go to manual focus. It does take a little bit of practice, but feel free. I usually just hit the AF on off button here to switch my focus settings, but for focus mode, always on continuous AF. Next up is autofocus transition speed, which is a setting I'll talk about really quickly. This is basically how quickly and how snappy your camera is at switching from focusing on one subject to the other. I have this at five. I think anything above five is just a little too fast and a little unnatural for my taste, but I think anything under four is a little too slow for my taste. Remember, I'm shooting high action sports. I want my autofocus to be quick and you know deliberate in what it wants to focus on. So for me, five is just the best middle ground. Right below that is AF subject shift sensitivity, which is basically how sensitive the camera is to new subjects and whether or not it will change to focusing on them versus what you were originally shooting on. I have it at four. Keep in mind, again, I'm shooting sports, lots of people coming in and out of the frame. I want my camera to respond to everything happening and make decision on its own, but I don't want it to be too responsive, so I just have it at four, and I don't want it to be too slow, so I don't really go anything under three. Focus area is the next one. I have it at zone. Essentially, you can just see the square here that I can move around with the joystick. Whenever there's a subject within that square, my camera is gonna prioritize that. So if I have something on the left of my frame that I wanna focus on, I'll just shift it to the left, vice versa with up, down, left, right. You can really just set the area. Usually I have it in the middle, but I would always just prefer to go with zone versus just a wide. Although if you're shooting any kind of scenic or any kind of wide environment, feel free to go wide. You can experiment with the focus areas. Mine really do change depending on the situation, but most of the time you can find me on the zone focus area. The next setting I'll talk about is eye face priority, which I have on, and you might be surprised that I'm caring about focusing on people's faces when I'm shooting sports, but believe me, this thing, the autofocus system is so good, it can track someone skating full speed down a rink or full run down the court or field or whatever you're shooting, so I have this on, on just the easiest way for the camera to identify this is the subject I want to focus on and follow them throughout. One more focus related setting I'm going to touch on that's not actually within this particular menu, but we have to go down to the setup menu and that is under touch operation, not that, but it is going to be in touch function in shooting, which I have as touch tracking. What this means is that if there's a subject in my frame that I want to track through an entire sequence, all I have to do is tap the screen and therefore my camera will now focus and track that subject and not deviate from it as long as they're in the frame. This is just a really neat little feature that I actually really underuse, but I should use a lot more. And something I would recommend a lot of people to check out and try if you have a camera with this capability. Believe me, especially in the A7S III, the autofocus settings are unbelievable on this camera. And this is just one of the many things that continue to amaze me about this camera and its autofocus. And there you have it. Those are all the settings I choose to use when I'm shooting sports. And just keep in mind, I know I didn't go through every single setting, but I just went through the ones that I thought were the most important or the most relevant and the ones I got asked about the most. If I was to go through every single setting in my camera, we would be here for a long time, but I think everything in here has value. And I think every setting I touched upon is something you should really play around with and see what works for you. And on that note, these are just my preferences. They're my settings for what's worked best for me and what I'm okay with using when I'm shooting sports. That may not be the same for you. That may not be the same for anybody at all, depending on the camera you shoot in, the environments you're shooting in, the lighting in the gyms, if you're shooting outdoors, indoors, there's so many different you know, elements that can change your settings drastically compared to mine. So just understand that these are my preferences. These are what I use most frequently. And you might have to change a few things, especially if you don't have a camera like mine. But I think with just understanding the basis of the frame rates I choose, the autofocus settings I choose, and my picture profiles, just having that basic knowledge might help you evolve and up your sport video game in terms of the settings you choose to use now. If you guys have any questions about the settings I talked about, if there's something I didn't touch on that you want me to make a future video about, or if you have a quick question, leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, if you learned something, please leave it a like down below. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to look at that subscriber counter because we are almost at 2000 subs on the channels. So if you haven't yet, please hit the big red button to subscribe now below. I would really appreciate it. And that brings us to the end of today's video. If you guys made it all the way to the end, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.